blessings and grace to one and all. Grace and peace. Blessings, blessings, blessings. This, this will be our, our continuing Bible study. So that's why it's a little casual, a little calmer, a little, a little easier to, uh, to just do. So we're just going to talk about the, the texts that will be coming to us uh, for Thursday, for Friday. And uh, I'm going to continue with the Gospel of Mark, uh, Mark chapter 14, uh, beginning with verse 12. And uh, this will be the, uh, the Lord's Supper. And so Mark chapter 14, verse 12. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house, he enters. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve, and while they were Reclining at the table, eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Then they saddened, they were saddened, and one by one they said to him, surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he, re he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. And then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Here is the gospel of our Lord. So Mark chapter 14, 12 to 26. And it is, uh, uh, this is one of the points to begin right in, to the, the begin of the points of the Lord's Supper. And in the language of Jesus, to say, this is uh, one instance, you could put a point right here, where this is the closure of the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. You see, uh, as Jesus says, this is the blood of the covenant. Uh, this, in this cup is the new covenant. He, he refers to uh, this ceremony as a, a new covenant, as a beginning. And so the, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, the Holy Communion, the end of the Passover, and the beginning of communion. So let's say just a few quick words about Passover. So remember that the Passover, when the Hebrew children were held in bondage, and the angel came and said, put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, and the angel of death will pass over. And so the, the celebration of Passover is actually a celebration of life. Uh, the Passover meal is the celebration of beginning, of new life. So um, there it is. Um, and now the other is interesting is that the rules of eating the Passover meal is that you had to stand and you had to eat and you had to be clothed because there was this sense of urgency of unleavened bread because, you know, leaven, the yeast in bread, requires time for the bread to rise. And so this is unleavened bread and, and the whole of the sacrificed lamb has to be eaten, all of this. But you see here, um, and uh, 
in verse 17, And when the evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve, and while they were reclining at the table eating. So you see here, this is now different. So they're not standing ready dressed. Here, here it is. Now there's some interesting things about this house too. As Jesus sent two of his disciples to said, go into the city and a man carrying a jar. Now where did this... Uh, so Jesus obviously knew about the man, knew about the jar, knew all about this and said, go find this guy carrying a jar. Now don't you think that would be a little um, particular in, in Jerusalem um, with thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are going to find one guy carrying a jar of water. Well, there it was. So uh, they found him. Now, um, this house, um, and there's, there's lots of work. We just don't have time, but there's time to uh, refer to this. But... Uh, as Peter breaks out of prison, as the angel releases him from prison, Peter, it's in Acts, Peter will go to this house. It's familiar to him. It's a large house. And he's at the outer gate, and this servant girl comes and opens the door for him. And, you know, so, in, in other words, this house is is a large house. It has an outer gate, a courtyard, large, big. Uh, so the disciples had already been there before. And uh, this house had been known to the disciples. And uh, so thus a, a room big enough to hold at least 12 people, but there it is. And um, so here we go. And uh, for them. So anyway, there, there, there is some indication uh, about this house and um, how important it is. And the people who own this house, who feel safe and secure that Jesus and his disciples, because they are under threat of their own death, uh, that the, the, the Pharisees, you know, Caiaphas, Annas, you know, these characters, have put out death warrants for anyone who will harbor and provide safe housing for Jesus or his disciples. Um, that's how serious they were. And that's why this house uh, becomes vital and significant in, in the story. And so here they go. Um, and uh, so here, here now is, is, our, is our study of, the ba of, of communion. And I would like for you, loved ones, as you see this, to... Um, Bring out your small catechism. You have these, don't you? Say, <laughs> yes, we do. And to uh, uh, come into this again and to uh, go through your small catechism and to get into part five, which is the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so here we have this for Jesus. We'll get to communion in a second but to review the highlights of Sunday school, of your confirmation. What is Holy Communion? It is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given with bread and wine, instituted by Christ himself for us to eat and drink. You see, again, Holy Communion is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given with bread and wine. And here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Paul, they all say, here is these, the words of the institute, institution. What are the benefits we receive from the sacrament? That this is uh, the body and blood given and shed for you for the remission of sins, for forgiveness. These words assure us that in the sacrament, Sacrament, not a memorial, not a remembrance, not an ordinance. In the Lutheran Church, this is the sacrament, the means of grace through which Christ will come to us. That here we will receive forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation. For where there is forgiveness of sin, there is also life and salvation. 
So Luther then asked this obvious question. How can eating and drinking do all of this? It is not the eating and drinking that does this, but the words given and shed for you, means of grace through word and sacrament, the human word and the divine word, through the, uh, the Augsburg Confession, the means of grace that comes to us. The word, the holy word, the human word given and shed for you for the remission of sin. These words, along with eating, drinking, are the main thing that we have in the sacrament. And whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, the forgiveness of sin. When then, Luther asks, when is a person rightly prepared to receive this sacrament? Fasting and other outward preparations serve a good purpose, yes. However, that person is well prepared and worthy who believe in these words given and shed for you for the remission of sins. But anyone who does not believe these words and doubts them is neither prepared nor worthy because the words for you require simply a believing heart. There we go. So, communion, <clears throat> a means of grace, <clears throat> it becomes the visual sermon as Christ gives this to us. It is the new covenant of renewal of this covenant. Covenant. This is Christ-filled. This is my body. This is my blood. This is a holy and divine mystery to receive Christ unto ourselves. This is also communal. It is community. It is congregation to be in this one body together. This is ongoing. Holy communion is ongoing. One baptism per lifetime and yet communion. Do this, he said, when you remember me. It is prayerful to remember, to meditate, to care and love. Holy Communion is a celebration. So bless us, O Lord, on this Monday Thursday. And to you we lift our prayer. Amen. <clears throat>